In this video, we're going to discuss something that we don't always acknowledge, and that is how emotions and grieving can apply to selling the family home. We'll also discuss seven strategies for making a plan to cope and offer a free download to help. I'm Beverly Bowen with Fine Properties. Welcome. Let's get going. We all know that a home is usually the biggest financial transaction that most people will undertake in their lives. But we don't always recognize that it can also be one of the most emotional. So even though the basic concept is an exchange of money for a product, this particular product is a structure and it comes with hopes, dreams, and eventually memories and experiences that are deeply rooted in their space. The structure provides shelter but it's ultimately the memories and associations that connect us so strongly to our homes. Moving in any situation is of course one of life's major stressors, even if it's fun and exciting for a new marriage, a growing family, or a job promotion. Selling the family home adds additional layers of emotions and stress. Sometimes selling the family home is a mostly positive experience. There may be empty nesters discovering that the large home is no longer serving them well, and they want to free themselves from the burden of maintaining it. They may be celebrating retirement and looking forward to a new chapter in their lives where they can pursue the activities that they always wanted to do, but never had time to do. They may be looking forward to a warmer climate with a new lifestyle, one floor living, and or living closer to children and grandchildren. They may save money on taxes and housing expenses and have more money left over for travel or helping their children. Even in these situations, there are emotions involved and sometimes it's the adult children that struggle most with the change. On the other hand, it may not be a positive experience. Selling the family home may be necessary due to a passing or poor health where the people can no longer take care of the home. This adds even more levels of emotions and stress. Many of us have experienced losses in the last couple years. I had four losses last year, and I've certainly learned a lot about grief. Selling the family home is rarely an emotionless financial transaction. There are usually many people and components involved that need to be addressed. Grief can be a real emotion, and it can hit you when you don't even expect it. First, I would suggest acknowledging and allowing your feelings, whatever they may be. It's an important part of the process. Selling can be very traumatic when the family home has been in the family for a long time and or when the sale is necessary due to passing or poor health. An important step in processing emotions is to accept them and be sure to be kind to yourself. Second, I would suggest as the emotions are surfacing, make sure that it is the right time to do it and that everyone involved is on board. This would be a good time to have a family discussion and let everyone express their opinions. If it is decided that selling is the best option, it will be much easier to move forward if everyone agrees. The discussion will likely yield many memories and family rituals. There were undoubtedly children's birthday parties, Thanksgiving dinners, graduations, visits from grandparents, and more. Families often see childhood homes through nostalgic lenses, and some expect that the safe, secure environment would always be there for them and their own families. Siblings may have very different ideas of what should be done. Some may not want to sell at all, but they cannot afford to buy the house. Others may be able to do what it takes to prepare the home by decluttering and depersonalizing so it can be sold. It's extremely important for loved ones to listen closely to each other and be kind as there are many emotions likely to surface. Third, it could be a good idea to acknowledge that the, that the decision to sell does not require cutting the emotional ties. Before you prepare the property to sell, if you want to remember your family house exactly as it was, consider taking photos and videos for an album and for digital sharing. You might also invite family members to each take an item that has meaning to them as a keepsake. There may be plants that remind you of grandma 
and can live on. There might be other items, a sports trophy from childhood or a piece of furniture that have memories that people may choose. This might even be a time for a party or family event to treasure the home together before it is prepared for the market. Walk through each room and reflect on the memories. Some people may benefit from journaling, writing about the experiences in the home and reflecting on how the home served its purpose. If the occupants are still around, take the time to let them talk and listen to some of their experiences in the home and even write them down. Fourth, it is time to depersonalize the home to make it appealing to buyers. Now you take down the family photos and memorabilia and pack them away. Next, you'll paint a neutral color so buyers can picture themselves living there. If there are simple improvements that can be made to make it even more appealing and to help increase the value of the home, this is a good time to do it. And it will be a good distraction. It will actually be easier to let go as the process of depersonalizing will be converting the family home into a more generic house. Fifth is to price the property properly without adding value for sentiment, and then emotionally prepare everyone involved. As potential buyers begin touring the home, a lot of emotions will likely surface. There will be feedback from the buyers, and if it is not all positive, it helps to be prepared and not take it personally. My sixth tip is to allow yourself the gift of a support system. It can be very helpful to have family and friends that are willing to listen, get together and provide a shoulder to cry on. Talk to loved ones about what you're going through or seek out friends who've been through a similar experience. Step away once in a while and acknowledge how hard and emotional this can be. The seventh tip is focus forward while preparing for the end. The full emotional impact may not hit until the sign goes in or a written offer is accepted. This is a big deal. You have dismantled something that was precious and grief and mourning are normal emotions. Try to look forward and find the positives that will result. It may help to have a proper goodbye by inviting family and friends over for one last time to say goodbye before you hand over the keys. Saying goodbye with respect and empathy can help everyone let go and provide closure. Do everything you can to think positively about what lies ahead. It's time to move on and create a whole new set of memories. I hope this has been helpful. If you decide to sell, consider having a realtor that understands and can help you deal with all the emotions and situations that can arise. I'm a seniors real estate specialist with the requisite knowledge, experience, and expertise to help our over 50 and fabulous clients make wise decisions. Be sure to request our free guide below with ideas of what to do with all the stuff when you are decluttering. And thanks so very much for watching. I'll see you on the next one.